What is going on, Ape Nation? Hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas. I know I sure did. I enjoyed having that time with my family. But guess what? Today is Monday, and we're back to business because we've got important stuff to talk about. And what better way to kick that off with than to talk about Ken Griffin because Ken Griffin is once again back at uh, attacking us, the apes, back at attacking AMC stock, which is exactly what we're going to talk about today. But before we get into this video, make sure you go ahead and smash that thumbs up button because it will really piss Ken Griffin off because he does not want this message to be shared to a whole lot of apes through the YouTube algorithm. And for the love of God, if you're not subscribed yet, I'm not sure what you're waiting for. I drop content just like this every single day. Enough of that, though. Let's go ahead and get into the video. So here's what we're talking about today. Ken Griffin, back at attacking AMC stock, attacking the apes, but why would he do this? I think you and I both know the answer. So we're going to move on and talk about how he's attacking AMC stock. So let me give you a little bit of a refresher course in case you haven't been subbed for very long and missed some previous videos in the past where we went over this. But uh, we're going to talk about News Corp today, okay? This is going to be very brief, and then I've got something very special to show you. But News Corp. Why is News Corp important? That's what we're going to be discussing. So News Corp owns the Wall Street Journal. It also owns some other assets, such as Market Watch, Barron's. Dow Jones, Newswire, and pretty much any other company you see out there that's attacking AMC stock in articles or videos on a regular basis. But why does it matter that this News Corp company, this parent company to all these other companies, is attacking AMC stock? And how is this tied to Ken Griffin? Well, maybe it's because Ken Griffin owns News Corp. Okay, he owns 1.4 million shares of News Corp. So it shouldn't come as a surprise if you're seeing negative articles or videos coming out through any of these sources. And speaking of these sources, you know that anytime you see these sources coming out with negative information about AMC, that there's something wrong, but not something wrong for us. Something wrong for Ken Griffin, the person that runs all of these uh, sources, these places, okay? And uh, it seems like he's working overtime right now. And this documentary that I'm about to show you, and don't worry, it's only about six or seven minutes long, very quick. It's narrated by a feller that uh, seems to be trying to act non-biased. But I think once you watch the documentary, you'll see exactly what's going on here. So when I see things like this, it makes me happy because I know what's going on. And I'm trying to show you and let you know exactly what you should be thinking and what you should know deep in your heart already anytime you watch anything like this. So uh, let's go ahead and run the clip. For theater chains, 2020 started out with a bang. <laughs> the opening weekend for Bad Boys for Life, starring Will Smith, raked in more than $73 million. Many of those tickets were sold at AMC theaters. The year before, the world's largest theater chain took in nearly five and a half billion dollars and was poised for another strong showing in 2020. But the coronavirus pandemic quickly made going to the movies a public health risk. And in mid-March, AMC closed all of its roughly 630 U.S. locations. But the coronavirus pandemic isn't the only thing pushing the company onto financially shaky ground. Here's how AMC went from king of the silver screen to trying to avoid bankruptcy. The first movie theaters opened around the turn of the 20th century, and by 1916, there were more than 21,000 movie theaters in the U.S. Most were Nickelodeons, named after the admission price of one nickel. In 1920, the Dubinsky family purchased a theater in Kansas City, Missouri. Their company would later be renamed American Multicinema, or AMC. AMC introduced the world's first multiplex in the early 60s. And 10 years later, the company owned 183 theaters in 13 states. Soon after, AMC was molding the moviegoing experience into what it is today. Attendance rose in movie theaters in the U.S. as Hollywood sort of improved its ability to build these blockbusters that were rich in spectacle, special effects. Uh, AMC played a big role uh, 
as it was building prominent multiplexes in the 1980s. AMC was also the first theater to install cup holders in the armrests, and they also promoted the ramped up stadium seating that's sort of ubiquitous today. But then throughout time, you had other introductions of technological advancements like the VCR, and you had cable television like HBO. Because of these new at-home options, Sumner Redstone, who owned rival theater chain National Amusements, said he planned to put a halt on building new theaters. Not AMC. By the end of the decade, it had more than 290 locations, but still only around 1,700 of the U.S.'s 23,000 total movie screens. In the 90s, the company rushed to build megaplexes with 16 or more auditoriums faster than any other chain. By the end of the decade, it had 2,700 screens, about half of them in megaplexes. But that building boom put the entire theater industry into debt to the tune of more than $5 billion. Two years later, AMC strengthened its balance sheet by selling a quarter billion dollars of stock to the private equity firm Apollo Management, which effectively took control of the company. The new investors got in just as the industry was hitting its peak of nearly 1.6 billion theater admissions a year. This marked the beginning of an era of rapid acquisition for the movie chain. In 2005, AMC merged with rival Lowe's Theaters. The roughly $4 billion deal created a 5,900 screen theater empire. Then, seven years later, China's richest man at the time, Wang Jianlin, put AMC on course to become the biggest movie theater chain in the world. He bought the company for around $2.6 billion. That included nearly $2 billion in debt. But movie studios were beginning to make bigger demands for theaters to screen blockbuster films. In 2013, before the release of Iron Man 3, AMC and rival Regal Theaters refused to sell online tickets to Disney's highly anticipated movie. Typically, studios and movie theaters will split ticket revenue 50-50. Studios make the movie, they market the movie, theaters show the movie. AMC and Regal said Disney wanted too much of a cut. The three companies eventually reached a compromise, but the standoff showed a shift in the power dynamics around hit movies. This model of creating big event-style movies um, and fewer movies has become the model um, that is most successful. So you're seeing these huge, big blockbusters like an Avengers movie. Um, and as more emphasis have been put on fewer movies, that in turn has given studios more leverage. Despite fewer movies driving ticket sales, the theater giant kept on growing. In 2016, AMC acquired both U.S.-based Carmike Cinemas and Europe's Odeon and UCI Cinemas Group, making it the world's largest movie theater company. But by then, movie attendance numbers had flattened, exposing a major liability for the industry. Too many theaters and not enough people to fill them. You had old theaters, so you needed newer theaters that were nicer to compete against those older theaters, but at the same time, you had all these better options at home, the bigger TVs, streaming, and, and DVD and whatnot. To keep pace, theater chains raised ticket prices, but also upgraded their amenities to draw viewers out of the home. They're trying to make the experience more luxurious with lazy boy chairs, offering better food options, anything they can to sort of offset and convince people, hey, it's worth paying this extra one or two dollars a ticket. This business model worked as long as there were hit movies to sell tickets. In 2017, revenues climbed with the help of such hits as Finding Dory and Rogue One, a Star Wars story. But the next year, lackluster box office performance led to declining revenues, and AMC's share price plummeted. Add to that another shot across the bow from Disney. It required theaters to commit to giving the studio a record high 65% of ticket revenues to screen Star Wars, The Last Jedi. These big movies like a Star Wars Avengers, these movies are make or break for theaters. They need those movies in order to have a good year. In 2019, AMC screened Marvel's Avengers Endgame a record 58,000 times over its opening weekend. Then in 2020, disaster struck the entire industry with the coronavirus pandemic. In March, AMC announced it was closing all of its theaters worldwide. It happened at a time when the company was loaded with nearly $5 billion in debt, causing the CEO to sound the alarm. There are no revenues coming in the door. But we're going to have to get liquidity from someplace if we all, in our industry, if we all have expenses and none of us have revenues. 
a lot of people believe that the market was oversupplied, that there's too many screens, too many theaters in the U.S. And I've spoken to a lot of people and they predict as many as half of theaters in the U.S. and Canada could go out of business forever after the end of the pandemic. AMC is thrilled to welcome you back to the movies with our new AMC Safe and Clean initiative. For now, AMC has buoyed itself by reopening over 80% of its locations, although with social distancing guidelines and without many marquee movies. And its stock price spiked following the announcement of an effective coronavirus vaccine candidate. But it was still far removed from its highs five years ago. Right now, the company is burning through $100 million a month and faces the possibility of running out of cash by year's end. Studios fear uh, that people will just become increasingly more accustomed to watching movies at home. And when the pandemic's over, instead of it bouncing back to normal, maybe even the frequent moviegoers, instead of going six or seven times a year, they're only going two or three times a year. The CEO recently told investors the company was prioritizing raising cash and reducing costs. 